we're going to talk about the absolute value function. Now the absolute value function is important um, and it can be recognized by the equation y equals absolute value of x. This is called the parent graph. This is the most basic absolute value function. Some other examples would be y equals absolute value of 2x minus 1 or y equals negative 1 half times the absolute value of x. Now hopefully you can understand and recognize that all these have the absolute value bars in common. So we have an absolute value function when I have absolute value bars. So absolute value, we're going to call them bars, are present. Okay. Now the general shape of an absolute value function, there's not an official name, but we're going to call it a V. Because the parent graph would look like this. Oops, that's bad. It looks like that. Okay. Um, so it's a V with a vertex. And the vertex is located right here. It's the minimum or maximum point. So it's very similar to a quadratic function, except a quadratic is a parabola, so it's a soft U, and here it's a V, it's symmetric through the vertex. Now if I wanted to recognize an absolute value function from a table of values, we're going to look at symmetry. So if you notice, right here I have my vertex, okay, because what I notice is that the y values are symmetric on either side. They don't have to increase or decrease by the same amount, um, you know, from 1 to 2, but they need to be symmetric on either side. So I have 10, 8, 6, 10, 8, 6. Okay? So an absolute value function from a table of values, the y values are symmetric around the vertex. And the vertex will always be located where your y value is a minimum or maximum in your table. So notice here my y value is the minimum. On the second table, here would be my vertex because my maximum value is a 7. Again, it's symmetric on either side, so I go down 654, 654. So this again, this table would represent an absolute value function. Now, does an absolute value function increase or decrease? And the answer is both. Um, here is my function. Okay. If it were increasing, okay, it would increase on the right side. Okay. Um, and I also could decrease on the left. So as I get closer, we always read it like a book, left to right. Okay. And my values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They hit the vertex, and then they become larger and larger and larger. Okay? Um, so our answer would be both. Now, is there a minimum or maximum? And the answer, it's located at the vertex. So we talked about this. So according to this graph right here, I have a minimum because my vertex is the lowest point. Now I also could have a different absolute value graph. I could have something opening downward. Okay. Again, my left side would be increasing. My right side would be the decreasing. Because when we talk about that, we're talking about the y values, what's going on there. Okay. And then here, my vertex, I would have a maximum, because that's where my largest y value would be represented. Okay. Now the rate of change is constant, except at the vertex. So it increases at the same rate, hits a vertex, and increases at the opposite rate. Okay. And is the graph symmetric? The answer would be yes, through the vertex. So if I were to go up to these graphs again, if I were to draw a line directly through the vertex, the graph would be exactly the same on either side. I could fold the paper in half through the yellow line and get the same graph.